Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for letting me speak to you this afternoon. And I just, uh, what, can you can you hear me okay? Okay, all right. Okay, I was just getting a little uh, feedback there for a second. Or, um, uh, so, sorry. <clears throat> Oh, hi. How you doing? Good to see you. Um, wait. Thunderous? <laughs> Thank you so much for your speaking this afternoon. I just wait. Can you hear me okay? Is there an S? Thank you for the yes. Only speakers waved. Just give feedback, but pauses. Uncomfortable. Throat. Paced. Good. Almost tripped. They taped it down. Good. Hey, how you doing? Good to see. Uh, uh. Yeah, trying to think. Restless. Turns to the screen. Clicks the little clicker thing. The end. Right. So, well, I, I could just uh, leave now, I guess. But that's really how, how lines are written. And I'll tell you what, it is the first and foremost question that any actor is asked. How do you learn those lines? And so let me give you a, a couple of little inside secrets. The first is that uh, learning your lines may be a little bit like what my dad said about flying a small plane. It's not that hard, but you don't want to mess it up. <laughs> the second is that it's not what we really want to talk about. And, well, that may not be much of a surprise. We, we'd rather talk about how great and nuanced our performance was. And the third thing is we don't really know how we learn them. I mean, I... Uh, have a theater degree and have the piece of paper. I bought all the books. I read some of them. And there's nothing in there about how to learn your lines. I mean, if there is, I've forgotten it. But I can tell you at least some of the methods we use, and maybe there's a way that you can apply it to, to your own life. At least that would be the goal in a TED Talk. But most of it deals with repetition saying your lines over and over again, learning your lines, maybe the lines before yours, and writing them or saying them again and again. And there are some people who not only learn their lines or their cue lines, they learn the entire show. They can recite your lines and their lines. And in the theater, we call those people annoying. <laughs> it's a special term of art. Uh, but uh, a little variation on that is some people write just the first letter of their lines, and I don't know why they would do that. That just seems to be a, a greater puzzle that they're creating for themselves. I, my method is that I will take a, a sheet of paper and I'll fold it over and take the script and uh, cover up my lines. I'll see the lines before mine, and I will move the page down slowly and see if I can get the lines pretty close at least, and, and say them out loud. And this has the distinct advantage of being a great method because you can cheat. And I, if I feel bad about myself, I can always just pick up that piece of paper and I know the lines perfectly. Uh, so that's another reason to get someone to help you out and be your coach and your partner to make sure that you don't uh, cut any corners. There are folks who learn their lines musically. We just saw some Shakespeare, and if you notice, there's a musical flow and a rhythm to Shakespeare. And so many actors, when performing Shakespeare, they'll, they'll score the script, just like a, in a music uh, performance. They'll make notations, and uh, that helps them learn their lines. There's not only a musical way, there's a visual way that people learn their lines. Now, how many of you are... Uh, consider yourselves visual learners. Raise your hand. Okay. Now, the others of you who didn't raise your hand because you think there's no such thing as visual learning, you looked at those people who raised their hand and you learned something. 
Think about it. One of the other ways that we try to remember our lines is to say them in the environment that we're going to be in eventually. Studies show that if you're going to regurgitate a speech later on standing, that you should learn that speech when you're standing. If you're going to be giving that speech pacing around on a red rug next to a stool in front of, of people in a screen, perhaps you should try that as well. I learned this secret little piece of information uh, about halfway through my first year of law school when I realized, much to my dismay, that I had studied all of my case law in bed. <laughs> Not much chance that they're going to uh, let me take my uh, test uh, in, in bed that year. But anyway, they, there are all these different methods, and, and you won't be surprised. There is also an app for that. Technology can help us learn our lines, and we can uh, use those apps to record them. But, th but they really just help us do it uh, the way we would anyway, some form of uh, memorization or, or repetition. But why do we need to know those lines? We have to get past that, that first level. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep here about the levels of knowledge just because I don't really know them, but uh, Norman Webb is a fellow who had this hierarchy of uh, the levels of uh, the depth of knowledge. And the first was recall and reproduction, which to me has the distinction of being simultaneously boring and potentially very exciting. <laughs> but this is just memorizing your lines and then spitting them out again. And, and any robot can do that. That doesn't take a lot of intelligence, and maybe that's why a lot of people think that we actors are, are not that intelligent. But if we get to the second level, that's where we have uh, the context, the, the skills and concepts of our lines. This is where we can figure out what our lines are in relationship to what other people are saying, or realize that Maybe this was my line because I believe this is what King Lear would say at the time when all three of his daughters are uh, trying to betray him and are very money-grubbing and evil. But that is the way we put our lines in context. The third level is where we get to uh, extended uh, strategic thinking, and actors don't have much strategy other than how to make sure they're in their light and not bump into the furniture. The, the next level is extended thinking. I like what we were talking about earlier when Alan said that we need to talk more about our movies. We need, to, we need to talk more about our plays, if we understand them or don't understand them. But uh, that's something that actors do over wine and cheese sometimes. So why does this have anything to do with you? I mean, when is the last time you had to memorize a, a piece of poetry? Um, that would be a great thing to do. You don't have to remember anything these days, right? Because you've, you've, you've got your phone. You, you can put your phone number in there. Uh, you don't even have to know your, your spouse's phone number, right? Do you know your spouse's phone number? If you didn't and I called on you, that would be a little bit embarrassing, wouldn't it? That would be a nightmare. And for actors, not knowing our lines is the supreme nightmare. It's called the actor's nightmare when we... Uh, wake up, we don't know what our lines are, and sometimes uh, we, we don't even know what play we're in. And so that can be uh, kind of frightening. But if you don't know your lines, there's somebody sometimes to, that, that can prompt you. Uh, someone who you can say line, they'll give you their line. Or, or there's a prompter, is what it's called, off stage, who may uh, give you a little hint as to your line. Sometimes even in performances. These days with technology, some folks will have the lines fed to them through their, a little earbud. But back in the old days, there was an acting duo of Lunt and Fontaine, and no one in here admit that you know them. Um, <laughs> that will date you. But uh, they were uh, classic actors and on stage, and they uh, got to a point in the play in complete silence. The prompter off stage said, the line, Still nothing. The prompter said the line again. Nothing. A third time, the prompter almost comes out on stage and yells the line, and Lunt looks over to the prompter and says, we know what the line is, darling, we just don't know who says it. 
So you have to know more than just your lines. You have to know the context that they're in. And the reason is that knowing those lines to the point where you can say them while you're eating, while you're uh, driving, while you're in the shower, you get to that point where they are just second nature, then you're free to be, be creative. You're free to add things to them, even if you have just one line. The movie, uh, The Greatest Story Ever Told, that had tons of stars in it, one of them was John Wayne. And John Wayne was the Roman centurion. He had one line. And his line was, truly this man must be the son of God. And so that's all he had to do. The camera is rolling, thunder, lightning. The duke steps forward and he says, truly this man must be the son of God. And the director stops it and he tries to sort of uh, be as gentle as he can. And he comes over and he says, uh, Duke, great job. It's not you, it's us, but uh, we just need to do it again. And if you would, you need to add something to it. It, it, it wasn't quite there. I, uh, you need to, to say your lines with something more. Say your lines with awe. So camera starts rolling again. Thunder, lightning. The Duke steps forward and he says, Oh, truly this man must be the son of God. <laughs> So he took his direction literally and said his line literally. But that freedom that you have when you uh, learn your lines so well that you can say them in your sleep, uh, that's so important because you have to get to the point where people know that they can rely upon you, that you're going to say your lines correctly. Your lines may be the cue for something that happens with the lights or, or the sound or the music. And so, if you don't say them, you, you, you may have to ad lib. And if you ad lib or you're doing improvisation, the rule is that you have to say yes to everything. You know, so you're on stage and you're, you're doing some improv and somebody starts talking about a penguin. Well, a penguin is all of a sudden in the story. You, you can't stop it. Uh, even if you're on the city streets in Manhattan, there's now a penguin in your story. You have to agree with that. But there are other reasons that you need to learn your lines because uh, not only does that give you the freedom to be creative, most importantly, you can then get past your lines. And when you get past your lines, you begin to see the big picture. It's not just your role, it's everyone's role. It's not just your lines, it's everyone's lines. And so the other thing I wanted to, to say was that we do uh, try to avoid talking about how we learn our lines, and uh, there, there's a point after the show when we are discussing things, that it's called the byline. And the audience is leaving the, the theater, and they're trying to get to the exits as quickly as possible, but they have to run this gauntlet of actors lined up, and they are saying, great show, great show, thank you, how did you learn your lines, et cetera. And I told a friend of mine backstage, Dennis, I said, I, I don't really like the byline. I feel uncomfortable. And uh, they're just going to say these things. I, I, we're not going to really get into depth. I mean, who's going who's to really say they didn't like the show anyway? That night, I'm in the byline, and the saying goodbye to folks, and a little girl comes up, and uh, I lean over and I say, hello, how are you? She says, hi. I said, did you enjoy this, the show? And she says, you weren't that good in the second act. <laughs> and I looked past her and there was Dennis, her grandfather, who had given her those lines <laughs> to speak. But we all have lines, right? This, these days we have party lines, we have boundary lines, we have our line of work, but we have to get past that. 
We have, we have to get to something else. We have to get to the point where we are looking at the bigger picture, not just recall and reproduction, but looking at something that is bigger than just our part. And also to remember that not everybody wants to talk about how they learn their lines. They don't want to talk about the rudimentary parts of their job. That waitress, she doesn't necessarily want to talk about the fact that she got your food to you on time. What she wants to know is that she did it with a smile, even when it was extremely busy. Your mechanic, he changes your oil and does it right? Well, that's not a surprise. That's his line. That's what he's supposed to do. The fact that he remembers your son's soccer team and asks you about it every time you go in, that is getting beyond just asking him about his line. And when we get to that point and we can talk about those things that aren't our line, your line, my line, property line, boundary lines, then we can get to the point where we're talking about something bigger. Not those things that divide us. Not my part. Not your part. Our part. Our part in this play. Somebody said, I can't remember, all the world's a stage. <laughs> and we are merely players, giving our lines, doing the best we can. And when we encounter other people, they don't <coughs> want to hear about their lines. At the end of the day, they want to know that their performance was inspiring. They want to know that they stretch themselves beyond the script, and they want to know that they did it with all. Thank you.